pleased to welcome next my friend, uh, Melissa Aguadello from the San Diego Met, who is going to share the passion. I know that you don't like that word and interest of hers. Take it away. I don't mind that word. I don't mind that word because it definitely is a passion. First of all, uh, Chris, thank you for inviting me to do a poem. Um, I'm sure you know that in the culture of spoken word poem, if you ask for a poem, you have to give a poem. So I'm sure you're going next. So I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that. Uh, poems don't write themselves. And so I've got to call out a few inspirations and a few people who helped me with this. Uh, first, I really want to call out Sun Sam, who doesn't know, but he will in a minute, that there was a lot of inspiration from a conversation he and I had recently that led to this. I want to thank Javier, uh, who is just always an example to me. And I am personally strongly impacted by leaders, uh, Latino leaders in, per in particular, uh, because representation matters. And as this little Colombian girl will tell you, it matters for me, which means I also, also want to celebrate my big brother, Carlos Moreno, for all he has been for me as well. And then I have to thank Donnie Dali, who for the last few days has been helping me edit and, and, and analyze and look at the poem. And he even was up with me at midnight his time to be able to rehearse with me last night. So Donique, uh, thank you. Uh, so um, yeah, here we go. So I spent 15 years in a classroom convinced I would never lead a school. Man, I'm no fool. Teaching kids every day, that was my fuel. I thought that leadership would just be sycophantic. You'd have to be small-minded, pedantic. There was nothing romantic in taking on that job. But then I realized that money goes where mouths are. I couldn't just ride that box car. I had to be willing to decide its direction. All of my objections to test scores and learning only happening indoors and desks needed neatly lined up on shiny floors. Those ideas are dinosaurs, but that meant that I had to make that change. That's the choice leaders make. We exchange daily interactions to work for the big picture of it all. And it's a guttural call answered by those of us willing to own the pitfalls. We want to impact and affect once and for all. We want to see paths diverge and futures emerge brighter. There's magical encouragement in the eyes of kids who show up every day regardless who need the safe spaces and relationships. We know their names and their stories and we don't just put them in categories. No, we claim new territories when we see the need. We identify trends and pat backs, track data that tells us where to improve, refuse to accept the way things have always been or boil humans down to numbers. We use critical eyes, celebrate the highs and we revise, revise, revise. That is we did until the Ides. It was March 13th, okay, almost the Ides, but I didn't see the betrayal coming either. Two weeks tops. You can quote me from March 12th, two weeks tops. I gave props as we walked out, certain y'all, two weeks tops. Halls emptied not by release bells, but by pandemic bombshells. And now nine months later, Christmas bells, but we're all locked in these COVID cells. Now I'm leading in my living room, eyes crossed from too much Zoom, worried about kids entombed in corners, trying to figure out how to live outside of the womb we built around them. I never realized how much schools insulate poverty. We need to see equal broadband plans and a computer in every hand and policy, able to withstand the pressure of the the 1%. And how do we figure that out with kids calling us, telling us their parents can't pay the rent? Because in a country this rich, we always had funds for laptops and hotspots. And y'all, I know this is a lot because I miss live faces at staff meetings. I miss the camaraderie of a conference, connecting to conscious practitioners who constantly iterate, innovate, agitate. I miss visiting advisories that were pure dynamite site visits. I miss high fives and unfiltered smiles, miles of lunchtime campus walks and kids piling into my office with an idea. This should not be this hard because it's been alarm clocks, silent, disruptions, violent, worries, giant, but possibilities, vibrant because this confinement has obliterated the educational box. It invites the unorthodox. Locks previously held tight now opened, inviting in some dopeness. There has to be more than reinventing a broken system online. It's an opportunity to design and redefine what school is. So I have searched for my inspiration. 
the Bronx River and a car trunk and a mobile science station, puzzle pieces conversations for soul leadership affirmation, books with brothers and blackmail elevation, stories with sisters formation, cause we slay. Culture built with the precision of a tailor and fellow leaders who refuse the option of failure. But I still have one question burning. Y'all, if what we do is real world learning and the real world is now only there for walls, what credits should they be earning for determining the skills they grow? This isn't the time to focus on more content to know. Maybe it's time to celebrate their individual growth. Are they making bread dough? Did they pick up the banjo, choose to get healthy and shrink their torso? Are they teaching themselves to paint like Van Gogh? Are they growing indoor tomatoes, learning through tutorial videos? What are they doing without being told? Breakthrough leadership, y'all, means being bold. So this is a chance to break the mold. What might we be able to inspire without the control? This time is an opportunity, so let's build our herd immunity to the lunacy of antiquated models remade online just to generate meaningless grades, perpetuate inequitable charades, and keep up the masquerade that school was working before COVID hit. Today, let's recommit to even more action. May, we may be a fraction of the educational world, but this big picture faction is 25 years deep. We are teams of way makers and rule breakers, agitators and activists. And like Carlos, Andrew, Elliot and Doc, we don't balk. Steeped in traditions designed to sweep away old thinking, leadership is not for the shrinking. So still we rise. Let's end today with eyes to the skies and plans to operationalize our revolution. Because even though we are tired, we will work with every shred, making changes to the roads ahead, and every morning roll out of bed ready to keep saying what we have always said. Whoa! Yeah. What, 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 what? Oh. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, what's up? Go! Beautiful. Holy free holy. You go. You go. Oh, that's great. Whoa. Smoke. Smoke. All the smoke. All the smoke. All the, oh, all the smoke. Take that. <laughs> Blessings. Friends, I know we're all feeling a lot of different feelings. I'll tell you what I'm feeling. Regret. Why did I not make you laugh? They don't want our smoke. Ah, uh, no one wants.